put on a uh, Ike mini flip. This is just, it's a little out of that. Good one, good one on a frog. Oh my gosh, how big his mouth is. To be a four pounder, if that thing had a gut, that's like a five or a six. All right, guys, we got a good show lined up for y'all tonight. We, uh, I say tonight, it's actually uh, 3.30 in the afternoon right now. I'm filming this uh, or doing this podcast show. So um, my internet is being kind of wonky. So hopefully everything goes smoothly. So um, hopefully it ain't too many breakups when we edit this. Um, but anyways, we got breaking news all over the place when it comes to the uh, bass fishing world right now between the uh, MPFL and uh, Bassmasters right now with rule changes in electronics. And we're going to kind of dig into that today. Uh, I don't have no guest on to talk about it. It's kind of hard to get a guest on in the middle of the day on a Wednesday. So uh, but we're going to dig into that and we're going to be talking about will this make a difference? What What is my opinion going I want to give you my opinion, shall I say, on all these changes that are going on. My opinion don't mount to a hill of beans. This is just me thinking outside of the box on some of this stuff. And also watching, I watched Ben Milliken's video um, that he did talking about it, which we know he's a big forward face sonar guy. He likes fishing with it. I like fishing with it. But there's some things that I can that I see that could make a big difference. It could maybe help with the sport. And um, after listening to uh davy height talking about it which i'm not a big fan of i like davy height as an angler um but i just was not a big fan of him on i guess tv because i felt like he griped a lot about the young guys and didn't give him really a chance as much i feel like this is just my opinion but just every time i got on there it seemed like it was some kind of griping going on with it so i just i didn't i like davy height as a person just when it came to uh, the on air stuff and, and how he came across on some of the views of the rookies that came in and all that stuff. I didn't care too much for that, but, um, but before we get into that, I want to thank our sponsors. We've got some really great companies that back us, um, and that have been there for us, you know, through thick and thin. So, um, uh, but I, I really want to thank Waterland sunglasses, uh, been great, phenomenal eyewear, um, ended up getting me another pair here, uh, here recently and i just i like them because i can have them for fishing i can have it going out nice somewhere um i got different color lenses i can use for cloudy conditions for super sunny conditions uh if you're just bed fishing the bed fishers bed fishers which i talk about all the time i really like those they're bigger glass uh sunglasses and uh they just they got all kinds of different lenses different frames to fit small heads big heads i got a big head so um but Make sure you go check out Waterland Eyewear. I have a link in the description here uh, that will help support the channel and also save yourself 15% on your next order of uh, Waterland. Also, I want to thank Missile Baits. Uh, they've gotten some great stuff that's come out after iCast. We're gonna, we're starting to add a lot of the Missile Bait stuff to our website. We've been, uh, As you all know, we had to redesign our whole website. Uh, uh, hopefully, you guys have been enjoying it um, and, and make it, finding it's a little easier to find things. I don't know. Uh, for me, it seems like it has been just you know editing and, and doing all that stuff with it so uh, but anyways we're adding more uh, missile bait stuff to it got the jigs up we'll, we'll go in and start adding all our soft plastic so you better go to oneobjectivebf.com and check out all the missile bait stuff that we carry uh, also amped outdoors i run them in my kayak i run them in a bass boat also run them in our rod boxes um, we use smaller rod uh, batteries in there for our rod boxes so we got our lights on our kayak trailers and then I've also used them. I actually used our power went out two years ago. We had that major, major cold front that came across the United States uh, with the highs only being in like 19 degrees. We lost power for a few days. So I was able to have my battery box to run cell phone chargers, um, all kinds of just little odd and end things. I had my inverter on there and I could run, you know, just a few odd and end things on there. So uh, it was nice uh, having all that. So make sure you go check out uh, Amped Outdoors. They got you covered no matter it's bass boats outdoor recreational stuff kayaks whatever they, they got you covered so make sure you go check them out also they got a 10-year warranty so that's a big plus um but anyways thank you guys thank y'all for all the support really really appreciate it also hope you guys have been checking out our one objective outdoors channel um haven't been able to get a couple videos out as much as we want um just because we've been vacationing and, and school start and sports start and and the weather's been crap, so when we want to go fishing, it's been crap. And don't get me wrong, I don't mind fishing in the rain. It's just kind of a pain in the neck to fish in the rain. So 
uh, with camera equipment and all that. So haven't done that, but I do plan on getting out. James is actually out right now. He's fishing Chesden, so I'm not sure what kind of content we'll get back on that. Hopefully, hopefully we got some. If not, and we'll shoot for another day of it. But um, but anyways, we got. Um, I'm gonna be going out. I'm hoping Friday uh, to do some fishing. So that's my plan. We'll see what happens, um, and maybe we can get out there. But I mean, it's cold. It's I say it's cold. It feels great outside actually. But but where it's been in the upper 90s, high humidity, 100 sometimes, to now of like 72 today and windy. Like it. Like, it, it feels a little cool, which I like it. I like it. it's football weather. You know what I mean? Hunting season's almost here. I'm really excited about that. Uh, we just went camping. Uh, we went to Stony Creek Campground up here in uh, Virginia, northern Virginia area. I'm going to say, like, northwestern Virginia. Um, but fun, fun. Had oops, sorry, had a phenomenal time with the family. We got out did a little fishing. Um, didn't catch nothing monstrous. Just got out there, put Matthew out on the uh, links. And he went out there and just throwing some drop shot, getting some kayak seat time, and uh, caught caught him caught him a couple. So, uh, and then I fished from the bank for a little bit, watching them. I, I screwed up because I brought both links, but I forgot to bring the rudder for one of them. So it was kind of, and I didn't have a paddle either, so you couldn't get out there and steer it at all. So <laughs> that was smart on my end. But so, anyways, we we went up there and went camping for a few days for Labor Day and. Uh, with some of the the girls that my wife works with and we just in their families we just had a good time it was fun just to get back and chill and ride the golf cart around a little bit and eat some good food man it was just a phenomenal time and i'm still suffering from all that food that i ate but it was good it was well worth it well worth the pain so let's get in to the rule changes that are going on with bass and the mpfl uh, MPFL came out with theirs first. I think it was yesterday or day four yesterday. Oh, actually, no, it was during the weekend, I think. Um, Labor Day weekend, where they released that there will be no live sonar in the practice or the tournament. And at first, I was like, this is crazy because, I mean, what do you do about future sponsorship ish, uh, you know, problems uh, or engagements or any of that stuff? Like, you know, having Garmin wanting to maybe come aboard and, Hummingbird and Lawrence, because all of them got their live imaging um, transducers and all that. And but in a way, I also see where they're coming from on this because you know you're getting to that level now where it should be so much of your skill level and all of that that's putting the fishing boat. Now I won't go back to this though because I understand that I got live scope and I understand 100 percent that that does not put the fish in the boat. It does not. It does help some guys that are struggling to go out there because I'm going to tell you right now, I've had a few fishing trips. Now, maybe maybe if I didn't rely on it as much and went and fished my ways that I fished, used to fish flipping jigs, shaky heads, and cranking and all that stuff, maybe I would have done better instead of relying so much on live scope and trying to go find these fish that are out there that are getting pressured more now than they were or the ones on the bank, it seemed like. Um, but but also I think too, that some of these people have relied on it and gone up there and done really well with it. And they get to this level. Now you're going to kind of see what it's like, who's putting in the time, who's cause, cause this is the way I look at it right here. Even with live scope, you got to put the time in. That's something me and James had just back in 2000. I don't know. Maybe it was 2000 that we got it finally or 2019. I can't remember. Uh, we finally started using it correctly when we went to Lake Fork and fished the uh, Hobie event or bass, it was bass. It's the first event um, after their championship that they had. This was their first like season, like their schedule. And uh, we went to Lake Fork and Toledo Bend back to back basically, and was able to use live scope to, and, and make it work for us with jerk bait fishing and stuff like that around all the um, stand up timber. But, you know, I, I'm looking back and, you know, uh, it takes a lot of time to perfect that as well. It, it ain't just go out there and let's catch them. Now I understand there's only a few baits. I mean, you can, like I said, you can use several baits. You can pull way off and see a rock pile way out there and throw a crank bait on it. I've done it. And you can throw a spinner bait over it or a jig or work a jig on it. I mean, I, I worked a jig at Pickwick. I mean, I was using an A rig and a jig on a spot that I found at Pickwick um, and was able to make it work, you know? So, 
but there's still that time. You got to put that screen time in to even make that work. And it's the same thing. That's what a lot of these kids are doing. Not It ain't just because they got it on their boat and went out there and they qualified for the elites. They had to put the time in. They had to work for this. They had to go and put all this time on the water. And they were able to make that happen. You still got to figure out where these fish are going to set up. You still got to figure out what to throw, how to work the bait. Uh, even reading live scope itself when it comes down to, is that a bass? Is that a catfish? Um, crappy and all that stuff is easier to tell apart, but is that a bass? Is a catfish is a carp, striper. Well, you know, what, what am I chasing here? So, cause you can spend a lot of time chasing something that's, that ain't even what you're looking for. So, uh, and a lot of these guys have figured that out. They have figured out what to look for on that as well. Um, but what you're going to see is these younger guys that have relied on this, that might be fishing the MPFL, they're just going to go put more time on the water anyways, because a lot of them, that's all they do is, you know, eat, sleep, breathe, fishing. They don't hunt or they don't have other activities that they like to do. All they want to do is fish. They want to be the best and that's all they want to do. So they're going to put that time in on the water. And that's where I think you see what the struggle was with bass this year. There was a lot of big names. If you look, we talked about this, I think in the last show, there was a lot of big names that was out of that top 30, out of that top 50 cut that struggled. I mean, just had horrible finishes. And I, I look at this. Yes, we all have bad years. We have years where it just it didn't work out. Maybe, you know, some of those finishes could have been top, you know, top 20 finishes if they would have got that one fish in or if their line wouldn't have broke or um, if they're – sorry, I feel like I got a hair on my face right now and it's starting to drive me nuts. Um, but if, if their boat wouldn't have broke down or, you know, weather pattern wouldn't have changed or, you know – there's so many variables in the sport and they probably could have had a better finish depending on if it just lined up for them. And when you have one or two events like that, it just puts you down there and it's hard to, it's hard to come back from it. So, so you eventually get to a point where you're just fishing to win every time then, you know, and you can be a hero zero in that aspect. So, um, but some of these guys too, as you look, they're selling their boats for this, you know, got their boats up. So for the end of the season or right when the season's in, they put their boat up. They didn't pull the wrap off and everything, selling their boat, waiting to get their other one. Some of them ain't getting their boats until January, February. So, you know, it, it could be, they're not putting the time on the water. You know, if they get their boats sold quick and some of them got extra boats and then some of them don't, some of them go hunting, which I understand you got to get away from work. Like that's their job. So I do understand they got to get away from work a little bit, but, you know, there's also that time. I mean, you watch guys at bow hunt, for instance. These guys are eat up with bow hunting. They will shoot all year long. They'll shoot bow tournaments. They'll do whatever. And when hunt season comes in, they are, boom, 100% dialed in with that bow. And that's the same thing with fishing. I think you have to be on the water. I notice a big difference from where I used to fish a lot uh, in my bass boat, fishing club events, fishing some of these open events around, you know, Smith and, and Bugs and all that stuff, Federation stuff, to how I fish now. I mean, I don't put the time on the water. I don't have the time with family and all that. So, you know, these guys that are – but you can see these guys up here that are whipping their butts every weekend. I mean, they're on the water all the time, all the time. And they still have tough times, tough days, you know. But I think what's going to happen is getting back to it, yes, you'll be able to take life scope away. I do not think the results are going to be any different. I think if they took live scope away in Bassmasters, which we're going to talk about that here in just a second, I think if they would have took live scope away in Bassmasters or the Bass Pro Tour, which they haven't come out with nothing yet on that, so I'm uh, kind of waiting to see what's going to happen with that. But if they took it away, I think you still got um, JT Tompkins up there. You still got McKinney up there. Um, you still got. Uh, ben Milliken, I know he's had some rough events, but he still was able to get up there and fish. I think he could still possibly be a player uh, hit and miss with that. I mean, he, he does use live scope a lot, um, but he knows how to find them big ones when he finds them. You know what I mean? When he when he gets them, he finds some big ones. Um, you, you're going to have so many other guys that are up there. I think they're still going to be up there. And the reason is because they're going to put the time in on the water to be ready for it. Cause if you looked at Ben Milligan, Ben Milligan didn't take the time off the water. When he found out he was on the elites, he pushed harder and he was on the water harder cause he's doing YouTube anyway. So him being on the water, it was, he had to be to keep filming. 
and all that. So he's constantly behind the screen. He's constantly behind holding a fishing rod. He's constantly making adjustments. He's constantly, you know, figuring his fish out, getting runtime on his boat, getting all this. I mean, he's just, he's, so when the elites hit, he's dialed in. All he's got to worry about is just the nerves of fishing the first few events to get over that, you know, the media and all that stuff, the whole, the whole hoopla that comes with being an elite pro. Um, but once he gets over that and he's on the water making the adjustments, it all comes naturally. And I think some of these guys didn't put the time in with live scope and, or just in general, be on the water. I think that's what the whole problem was this year is a lot of them took it easy, taking vacation, taking a break. I get it. I understand that, but they, I think some of them, you know, they might have went fishing here and there, but they were, you know, home. They were getting tackle ready. They were getting um, sponsorship obligation stuff, you know, making deals and being on the phone because that's all part of it as well. But I think there was a lot that didn't put the time in on the water like they should have. And I don't know that for a fact. I'm just saying that's what I think. I think, I mean, I, I see you follow a lot of these guys on Facebook and Instagram. So I think that was a lot of it. They just, it just, time with the water man it's i mean we got guys you know like say low even the kayak and stuff these people you got russ snyder you got christine fisher you got casey reed you got um uh, so many other guys i can't think of all the time in my head right now that that's all they do is fish and they fish all year long and they just put the time in and it's it's phenomenal to see it see it go down you know and and, and be at the top of their level and do well so i personally I don't think there's going to be a big change. Uh, you will have some that I think may, might fall off a little bit. But I think once they start getting the swing of thing and the groove of things, they'll come back around, they'll put their time in, they'll realize where they need their weaknesses are, and they're going to put their time in, and they're going to be just as good. Now, the problem that you're going to see, so for what it sounds like, is a lot of people worried about the viewership. For one, they're worried about the resources, you know, and hurting the fishery and, and all that stuff. I think the other part is, is the viewership that they're getting because a lot of people are, I mean, you see it you go on Bassmasters or, or you go on um, MLF and everybody complains about, oh, just staring, just watching people fishing with live imaging. They're just staring at a screen. Well, Ben Milliken also said it too. It is really boring to watch someone fish. If you go watch somebody fish a full, like if you watch YouTube and you got some of these guys that'll do their uncut fishing where the video is like like four hours or something you know what i mean or or, or they'll do like a two-hour challenge or, or whatever and it's uncut and it is boring i mean i don't care who it is not unless they are just constantly catching fish which is very rare that it happens not unless they're just constantly catching fish it's boring they're flipping they're casting it's a very, you could go to sleep to it and I have, I'll, I'll put my phone on YouTube sometimes and watch certain videos and I'll go to sleep to it but just because, you know, you're just getting in it and you're just going to sleep. So, like saying, fishing, just watching fishing can be boring in general. So, if you're watching a YouTube video, for instance, most of the time you're watching a 15 minute video that took eight hours to make. You're watching them catch constantly. You're keeping, in, you're keeping, you're being intrigued the whole time. Like, what's he going to catch next? What's going to happen next? Um, because, I mean, you really think about it, all of our attention spans are, are short as they can be right now. You can, you can think TikTok and Facebook and Instagram and all that for that because we're constantly wanting more and more and more. So I think a lot of it is, is everybody is attention span is so bad now that it's people are like, man, I, I, this is boring. I don't want to see it. But I mean, if you had to go watch a man flip up the bank, for eight hours sitting there eight hours on your computer watching this are you going to watch it i think viewership's still going to fall off I, I i still think it's going to be you know just a tough one to watch because these guys the other thing too you got to realize too is this yes you can take live imaging away but when you go up north them guys are still going to be staring at them graphs they're still going to be staring at because you know what we got 2d they got 360. They can still use that stuff. And they've been using 2D for years. Aaron Martins and all them guys have been using 2D. Edwin Evers, all that catching bass on them on shoals and out there on them rock piles and all that stuff. So I think that you're 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 just 
it's going to be the same show. I, I don't think it's going to get any better than what it is. Because if you're sitting here, like for me, if I'm working on a website or I'm adding products to our website or just doing whatever, editing videos, if they're deficient in terms, I'll have it over to the side and just listen, whether it's uh, MFL or um, if it's the Bass Pro, I mean, Bass Pro, Bass Masters. Sorry, I can't get words out. I'll have it over here on, but I'm not constantly watching. So, a lot of these people, a lot of these views they're getting, a lot of the stuff they're getting, it's not people just sitting there watching nonstop. It's guys that got to cut on and they're just listening. You know, we walk around the shop when we're working on stuff, got our earbuds in. I'll pull it up on the computer, have my earbuds in. I could be over there just listening to the tournament going on. Most of the time, it ain't nonstop catch. I can tell you that now. So I don't think viewership is going to be a big difference with LiveScope gone. And Ben Millen can talk about the first two events, Fork and Toledo Bend this year, was the best two tournaments that had the most viewership out of all the Elite Series events. So a lot of it, it's the startup of the season. Everybody's gung-ho. They want to see it. And then it's going to start falling off. That's just how it is. It's, I mean, it's just like that with tournaments. You know, if you fish a, a club series, for the most part, guys that are – fishing and it's going to be based off points or something like that to make a classic and guys realize they don't have a chance at it no more making it you'll start seeing guys fall off you know and it's the same thing here with people watching they'll watch bass masters because there's nothing going on february march for the most part so a lot of people are just sitting around watching um, if you got bad weather they're sitting around watching and they're just so once all this wears off and summer and spring hits real hard everybody's out fishing Everybody's on vacation or they're helping with kids sports or whatever. They're not watching there. It's going to fall off as the year goes on. So I don't think taking away live imaging is going to change anything for the MPFL, but they, I do understand they had to make a business decision. They feel like that was in their best interest. And if it works out, they might've made a great business decision. They might get more viewership off of that than bass in um, major league fishing. Um, ben Millen considered as well. They're standing out. This is they're they're going to be something, you, you know, to, to be different in these tournaments. You need something that makes you different. I mean, you got to have something that's way off, that's way different. Um, MLF did that for a while when it was doing every fish. Well, they still do it now, but every fish catches or every fish counts, and uh, you know these big total bags and all that stuff. Well, now you got the MPFL is going to have no so no live imaging. I think the offshore bite still going to be a big deal. Um, but you know, it just depends on the time of the year and the lake that they're on, in my opinion. So, uh, I think they made a great decision. I think it's going to be cool to watch and see how things play out. Um, Bass just came out with their schedule. I mean, not their schedule. I'm sorry. Their, their rule, their rule change. So, um, it says the first, uh, the, the first part of the rule change was the number of live sonar transducers will be regulated to one and must be mounted to the trolling motor at the bow of the boat. So, you know, where a lot of guys, Jacob Wheeler, Dustin Connell, some of these, a lot of pros were running, you know, two up front. You got perspective and regular um, forward facing. So one's flat, so you can see the bottom really well, and the other one is forward facing. You can see the fish. You can still see the bottom, but not like, you know, perspective. Um, and then you had people that were running them in the back of the boat for practice where they were running four graphs at the console during practice going down docks. And, and flats and seeing where all these fish are stacking up. So you're going to take that aspect away. So I like that because I think, me personally, it's stupid to have that many freaking live scope transducers on the boat, have that many graphs on the boat. I mean, you know, it's just, to me, that's just ridiculous. And I like technology. I really do. I like having all the stuff on the boat and playing around with it and all that. But it does come to a point where it's like, really, we're fishing now. Let's take our skill level. Let's go find these fish and um, see what we can do. You know, having one isn't going to change the game when it comes to the viewership, though. You're still going to have people using because most of the time that's what they were still using. Up up north, you see guys running too. Like I swear, like on Scott Martin, I don't know if it's true or not, but I, if you watch some of his videos, it looks like he he might have because he has two graphs and they're all in forward facing. So I don't know if one's facing one way and one's facing the other, or they're facing kind of like angled away from one another so he can get a big perspective of what's going on. I don't know. But now we're taking it down to one. So no more perspective and live uh, or forward facing together whatsoever. Uh, 
Let's see. Um, it says Bass will also provide a list of acceptable live transducers from major electronic manufacturers' equipment. Not on this list is banned from usage in Elite Series class competition. This equipment list will be vetted and updated annually. So I'm almost wondering if they're going to take away the saltwater transducer from Garmin, where it can go way out there. I think they're going to have everything where it's going to be basically, I can't remember what the regular one goes to, 150 feet out or something like that. So um, I think they're going to, you know, they're going to limit that as well and, and maybe not have to solve what I don't know. That's just where I'm kind of reading. This, this is where I think it's going. Um, I said, secondly, the elite series and classic competitors will be limited to a total of 55 inches of screen, including bow and dash head units. Uh, the trend to add more and bigger head units to boats is becoming a safety concern as the bigger screens may create blind spots, impacting the safety safe piloting of boats and absolutely i have seen videos where guys are on this is crazy you can't have screen time or screen time thinking of my kids you can't be on your phone while driving a car because it distracts you it don't matter if you're just easing down uh, uh, uh the middle of town with stoplights and a bunch of traffic you're not supposed to be on your phone because if someone stops in front of you and you pay attention boom you hit them I see this with people idling around a lot. I've actually had somebody idle really close to me on a point one time. didn't even see me. I've seen videos of people getting run, the back of their boat getting run into because a bass boat guy was idling around, staring at his grass. Boom, there was a boat. Ran right into him. Now, it didn't hurt nobody. caused some damage. But what happened if somebody was swimming right by their boat or, you know, it knocked somebody into the water or knocks them down and get hurt or, you know, like... It's just property damage in general. So, me personally, I almost think it. I mean, I know you got to have it. You got to have GPS, especially a lot of these bodies water running. But I think using some of these transducers and all that, sh should we be at an idle before we can even use? I mean, some of these guys can get up there and run a little bit faster clip, just kind of checking out the bottom contour, but you're distracted by that. So, um, but also, like I say, they're going down to 55 inches, so that's total. So most of the time, it's probably going to be two graphs at the console, and either two or three up front, depending on the graphs you run. If you run one of those big, uh, what do you call those things? It was an MPL, or uh, I can't remember. And I can't remember the daggone name of that daggone screen now. But anyways, they're going up to like 22 inches or something like that. Uh, Seth Fighter had one. I mean, you're going to knock a lot of this down. Um, a lot of guys are going to be picking – you know, there might be some guys getting on smaller graphs if they need to have, you know, four graphs or they might go down to like some nine inch graphs or something, you know. So um, it just it, it cuts down the amount of technology that is going to be on the boat. And just I mean, it, it's it's just crazy. How, I mean, I think it was Davey Height that was talking about it, saying, that, you know, you got a lot of these high school kids that come and meet these pros. You got college kids that come and meet these pros or trying to compete and they're going to feel like they got to spend well over $100,000 with a rig and graphs to compete. We're kind of pushing people out. You're kind of making it a rich man sport, which it kind of is now because, I mean, you got to be able to have money to do this game. It, it ain't like it used to be back into, let's see, Mike Iconelli, Mike Iconelli or Gerald Swindle or Brandon Polinick where you can kind of just, you know, get out there and fish, sleep in the back of your truck. You still can sleep in the back of your truck and save money there, but like if you know to be feel like you can be competitive, you still got to have all this technology. So I feel like we're cutting back and, and making it to where I'm not going to spend as much money. There's still a lot of money, there's still going to be hundred thousand dollar, hundred fifty thousand dollar rigs. This is how it's going to be. There's no backing away from that, not unless they go to like, hey, everybody can only run 18 foot boats. How cool would that be, especially the professional series? Now, I know in the Great Lakes, it might be a little difficult because you know the waves and all that stuff. But imagine we got away from that or we cut it down to certain bays can only be fished or, or, you know, like, Hey, 18 foot boats. That's all you can run now. Let's get that, that price down. You know what I mean? These guys ain't got as much money in their boats, man. That'd be cool. I like to see, I would like to see something like that. I'd like to see it mandatory boat size or, or something, you know, like cuts it down big time, but I don't know. That's for a whole nother day, whole nother show. Um, let's see. Number three, the elite uh, elite series and classic competitors may not have uh, may now have only one electric motor mounted to their boats. 
there has been the rise of use of electric motors mounted to shallow water anchors, which makes the enforcement of current rules like long lining and trolling very difficult. So Ben Milliken and all of them started it. I think Chris Aldean might have had, I can't remember if he had some, but it was a few guys that were putting these um, troll motors on their power poles. And it was helping them with when they're rolling up on a spot, when they see it, they can hit it and basically reverses the boat or it kind of holds it still. Especially if you got a spot like on the front and you're working with these, I mean, you can keep your boat still. So I can see that going away but also what they're meaning is in long lining and trolling is let's say you make a cast out there but you're having to reverse back because you're pulling up on these fish so now you're kind of trolling right because if you're pulling your bait you're trolling as that thing's reversing back so i could see the gray area there with that i could see that being a big deal so uh i think and i never thought about that when i seen this but in all honesty i mean i'm seeing a lot of guys coming in especially when it's real wavy or they're out there and like we're like Lake Fork and all, they were tearing these motors up that was on those power poles big time. I mean, it's just, they're not made to be beat around that hard like these guys run. Um, lastly, bass will focus on more diverse uh, elite series schedule, creating a wide variety of fishing styles demanded for success. While live sonar technology will remain a constant tool used at a very, at the very highest level of competitive bass fishing, experiencing, Experience and a deep-seated understanding of fish behavior, movement, and patterns will also be needed for success moving forward on the fisheries scheduled. So they're going to, looks like they're going to try to schedule things to where it could be all bites, but primarily trying to get into where these fish are going to be shallow. That's why it seems like it's going to be to me. So they're looking like a lot of, you know, they're going to be doing the 2D and the 360 for sure. So you're going to see a lot more guys, I think, running home and bird so they can run a 360. You're going to see a lot more 360s getting used, I think. Um, me personally, the Lorance 360 deal that they got on their trolling motor, I don't like that too much because you, you can't use both. You know, you got to, where you can have the 360 down and you can still use your motor and move around, you can't do that with the Lorance. So I don't like that too much. Um, just trying to go over all my notes here, make sure I got everything that I wanted to cover. Um, but you know, like I say, I think a lot of it is going to possibly with bass and MPFL is trying to reach here is for one, a better viewership for two, a more level playing field where they can have, um, limitations on stuff that, you know, baseball's like that golf's like that auto racing's like that. They have limitations. Bass really don't have a lot of limitations when it comes to the boats, except for, you know, horsepower rating. Other than that, you know, it's it's not a lot of limitations when it comes to other things, um, you know, when it comes to that kind of stuff. You know, yeah, you can't use A-rigs, you can't troll, you can't, um, you know, you can't do certain things like that. But there needs to be some limitations with some stuff. Now it's going to get out of hand. It's going to get crazy. So now they're jumping on it. They're going to still have their committee to keep, you know, reviewing this each year and seeing which route they need to go. Um. You know, one of the notes that they talk a lot about is the learning curve is cut down and the pros, you know, complaining about it. And, you know, what took them 20 years to learn, these guys are learning it in a year. Yes and no on that. And you got to look at it this way, too. It's the the ability to reach out and get any kind of information. Right now, I could go on YouTube and type in how to fish a swim jig, and it's going to come up with a pile load of videos on how to do it and i can just pick through and go to whatever i want to watch and, and I, mean, I can get rod sizes line sizes where to work it how to work it what's the best colors this time of year and where these guys didn't have all that information they just had bassmaster magazine you know and watch bassmasters on sundays like we all did now these kids have got a, a plethora of information i mean they're right here on their phone i mean they boom they can be out on the water man you know, fish are doing this. Let me, let me see what, how to fish for bass in the spring, you know, like what, what, or I got a lot of fish on beds. But I don't know how to catch them. Well, I mean, how to catch fish off bed. Oh, boom. Right there. Now I'm not saying they can do that during a tournament, but they have the, they have so much and the pros have given us this information. They have everything they know for the most part. 
they are giving us this information. So a lot of these people have grown up watching these guys, watching Ike and Ellie, Randy Howe, uh, Edwin Evers, and, and, and all of them, you know, Ot Defoe. And they've, they're just implementing what they've learned. So, yeah, their learning curve is a lot shorter just based off the technology we have right now of just being able to do research on the lakes. I mean, you got Google Earth now. You got, I mean, you can you could go in and watch a video on YouTube and basically pick out, if you're going to fish a certain lake and you can pick out structure in the background, a tower or a whatever, and go, oh, man, I know where that spot's at. You know, you watch Bassmasters, heck, they get a blown out view of it. You got these spots. There's so much information out there. So I don't think so much of the live scope has cut down the learning curve. I mean, it helps a lot. I think more of it is just the social media aspect of it. Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok. I mean, all this stuff that's out there, people giving tips on how to do certain things, man. We did it to ourselves, guys. We, The pros, y'all did it. Y'all did it to yourselves on this. And I'm not saying I'm blaming y'all for it, but you also got to understand you're you're fussing about the learning curve, but you're helping people catch fish. So the stuff that took you years to learn, you put in a, a 15 minute video and just showed everybody how to do it. So that's my opinion on that. I just, um, but I think I kind of cover everything on, uh, on that really uh, on all my notes. Um, the only other thing I think what I would like to see, uh, on MLF and the elites, um, well, MLF's already done it. And, I think the elites need to follow suit. I think they need to do it for the opens. I know it's hard because some of these lakes are local, so opens might be tougher, but definitely elites. Um, and I think, and I'm not sure all the rules on an MPFL, and I'm going to do more research on MPFL because I haven't really followed them that much. Just here and there when I see clips, and I need to go in and research a little bit more, follow this along a little bit more, see what's going to happen this year. But I think – you know, like you hear some of the pros talking about some of these rookies and some of these younger guys, they don't really have families. They don't really have, I say they got families, but they don't have like kids and all that stuff where they got big sacrifices to make is they're going out and they can go before the cutoff and fish all these bodies of water. They're getting so much time and just figuring, cutting and breaking down the water, not saying they're going to figure out a pattern that far ahead, but they can break down water. Okay. The fish should be here at this time or around this point at this time. You know, here's a ledge, here's a ledge, here's a brush pile, here's a brush pile. I think, personally, there should be no, but once the schedule is released, you should not be able to be on that body of water. Once that schedule is released, I don't care if you live on Lake Fort and Lake Fork is scheduled out, you should not be able, you should not be able to be on that body of water. It's, it's done. You got to go fish other water around there. It sucks for the guys that live close to it, where that's their home body of water. But I think it should be off limits. As soon as this schedule is released, say they release the schedule tomorrow, they should not be on that body of water. And so that's just my opinion. I think that's how they should do all of them. They're pros. They shouldn't have to have, you know, all this, you know, before the off time or off limits and all that stuff and just cut it out. So that way it kind of saves at least that aspect of it, you know, of, even getting information, you know, when that schedule's out, that's it. There should be no cutoff of, you can't get no information after this date or any of that. You know, it all should be, Hey, I got a fish Lake Gunnersville next year. I don't want to hear nothing about it. Now I know you can't cut out YouTube and all that stuff. I mean, they're going to get, they can get the information there if they want, but when it comes to talking to people and getting waypoints or getting whatever, it all should be cut out. So, that's just my two cents on it. Anything I say does not mean it's, you know, that's the word. It's just, that's my opinion on it. And I think, you know, I, I think this season's going to be an interesting season. I think it's going to set up for an even more interesting 2026 because I think they're going to see things that need to be changed and they're going to get changed again. Or there's going to be things that people are like, man, that really didn't make a difference. That rule really didn't make a difference at all. And, here we are. So <laughs> that's just uh, that's just my two cents. So, um, but other than that, I ain't gonna keep rambling, guys. Uh, I did enjoy getting back on here and talking with you guys. Uh, I'm gonna try to. I got another show in the works that I, that I'm thinking I'm, I'm gonna be doing here soon. So um, just stay tuned. I'm working on trying to get a guest for the next one. 
So hopefully we can work that out. And, uh, but so far, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have that, uh, please, you know, reach out on our, our, our social medias. We try our best to, to, to comment on those if we can, if we see them. We don't get a lot of the messages. But uh, but if not, you can always feel free to uh, email us at oneobjectivebf at uh, gmail.com. Um, or you can, you know, call us or whatever. If you got any information for a show or, you know, you got some review for the show or whatever, it, you know, just let us know what you, what you like about it, don't like about it. And you can also write it down in reviews for uh, Apple iTunes and all that. So, um, but other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button and uh, follow along. we got, we got some more shows coming and, and like say fishing's going to really start kicking in for us and uh, also some hunting season stuff. So we might have some hunting videos uh, coming along as well. And I think I'm thinking about it. Uh, I know we've really grown the one objective bass fishing channel, um, but I'm really, really thinking about moving this over to our outdoor channel because our other channel have just moved into basically installs. And I, you know, we're just trying to hold them. <coughs> Sorry. Throat's been a little sore, but, um, we're just really trying to grow our other channel, and I think this goes along more with what we're doing fishing-wise, the outdoor channel. Um, so I'm thinking about moving it on over uh, to there, and you'll start seeing some of our stuff on our YouTube channel there. Um, but, you know, other than that, guys, hope you enjoyed the show, and uh, we will talk to you guys later. See ya. <laughs>